So far, we've been pretty focused on the antibody side of things during the pandemic, but recent work suggests that T cells aren't sitting this one out. And that could mean something significant in terms of immunity, even for people who haven't been infected with the new coronavirus. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Antibodies often steal the spotlight when we're talking about immunity, but they aren't the only big player in the immune system's response to threat. Both B and T cells are important soldiers in the war on pathogens. B cells produce the antibodies, which are meant to fight off a virus before it can enter a cell. On the other hand, killer T cells can seek out and destroy already infected cells. I didn't make that name up to work with the war metaphor here. They're really called killer T cells, although cytotoxic T cells work just as well. There are also helper T cells, which spend their time nudging other immune components to get the work. Data published in the last few months suggest that T cells could be an important part of the conversation surrounding both immunity and vaccine development. A study published in Cell at the end of May examined blood samples from 10 COVID-19 patients, detecting in all patients helper T cells that responded to the spike protein found on the surface of the virus and detecting killer T cells in 70% of those patients. Interestingly, helper T cells were also detected in some of the 11 healthy controls. Because these cells are responsive to components of the virus, like that spike protein, that are shared by other coronaviruses, there's some potential for a degree of immunity in individuals who have never been exposed to the novel virus if they have previously been exposed to other common coronaviruses. Another study published in Nature at the end of July reported similar findings, detecting helper T cells specific to that spike protein in 83% of COVID-19 patients and in 35% of the healthy controls. A study published in Science at the end of August reported reactivity of the helper cells that was comparable between SARS-CoV-2 and common and coronaviruses. A study published in mid-August observed T-cell responses even in individuals with no detectable levels of antibodies. All of these data could be telling us something about what's behind the wide range of clinical responses we've seen so far, from asymptomatic to mild to severe. It's possible that individuals on the zero to mild end of symptoms are there because previous exposure to a common coronavirus has fitted them with some immunological protection, but it's hard to tell at this point. Overall, we really don't know yet what this means in terms of immunity, infection, or reinfection. Though incoming data suggests that these T cells express strong characteristics that we associate with immunity against the virus, so far we can't say for sure whether non-infected patients with T cells are less likely to get sick or to experience severe illness when they do, or whether previously infected patients with T-cells and dipping antibody levels possess some level of immunity following recovery. If they do provide long-term immunity, that's great news on many different levels. T-cells can stick around for years. Data suggests at least 17 years for the SARS virus, but we haven't been in this long enough to know if that's true for the current coronavirus. But as always, we'll be keeping an eye on the data and we'll be back with any exciting updates. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on antibody drugs. We'd also really like you to subscribe to the show down below and like this episode. And if you head on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show even during this pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.